Let me start with a mysterious quotation from the Gothic novel we're going to read a selection from. Did you see with my eyes and know with my knowledge, you would perhaps better understand. Count Dracula. So the novel I'm going to introduce here is Bram Stoker's Dracula. Bram Stoker, Dracula's author, was born on 8 November 1847 and he died in 1912. He was born in a suburb of Dublin, Ireland, and he was the third of seven children. He became a theatre manager and an author of sentimental and sensational fiction. Bram Stoker was a sickly child. He suffered from an unknown disease and he was mainly confined to his bed for the first seven years of his life. All of a sudden, after those seven years, he miraculously recovered and could lead a normal childhood from then on. He attended the University of Dublin from the mid-1860s to 1870, and he studied history, literature, physics and mathematics. He was also quite a popular athlete, and although he did not shine in academics, he served as president of the University Philosophical Society, which was a prominent debating club. His first paper for the society was called Sensationalism in Fiction and Society, and this paper won him some acclaim in college. After completing his education, Stoker took up a post as a civil servant in Dublin Castle. This left him far from satisfied, however, and in 1871 he began writing theatre criticism without pay for the Dublin Evening Mail. He published his first short story called The Crystal Cup, in 1872, and this was followed by three short novels, all of which appeared in 1875 in a magazine called The Shamrock. But his work went largely unnoticed. He tirelessly promoted theatre in Dublin, and in 1876, his review of a Dublin production of Hamlet won him an introduction to the very famous actor of that play. That famous actor was a rising star called Henry Irving, you see his picture in the bottom left corner. Stoker and Irving became good friends and in 1878, Irving asked Stoker to become the business manager of his new venture, the Lyceum Theatre in London. So Stoker gave up his civil service job and went to work at the theatre. He became Irving's secretary, confident, accountant, public spokesperson, business associate and tireless companion and friend. Stoker married his childhood sweetheart, Florence Balcom. She was a beautiful woman who had previously been courted by another Dublin acquaintance and author called Oscar Wilde. The drawing on the right is thought to have been made by Oscar Wilde. Stoker and Florence had one child together called Irving Noel Stoker, but Stoker's long hours at the theatre and many months on tour made that he was frequently absent from home. He also didn't have much time to write, so he only wrote short stories and worked on his novel only every once in a while when he could find like a little bit of time to work on it. In March 1890, Stoker began assembling the many disparate pieces of material that would become the story of Dracula. He spent his summer in Whitby, Yorkshire, where he encountered the name Dracula in a library book. He also completed his legal studies in 1890 and was called to the bar in London. He published two other books before Dracula, but his notes indicate that he worked on the novel sporadically over the next seven years. Up until a couple of weeks before the book was published, it had a different title. Stoker first gave it the title The Dead Undead, then changed it to The Undead and finally decided to use Dracula as the title. Dracula was published in 1897.